All right, joining us now in our Times Square studio, David Nelson, chief strategist at Bell Point. David, good to have you Thanks with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, David, let's talk about the Fed's minutes saying sure. that they want to start unwinding the balance sheet. Uh, why is this significant? Uh, that's been the elephant in the room for some time. You know, what are, how are they going to unwind a massive $4.5 trillion ba balance sheet? And to put that in context, pre the financial crisis, it was less than a trillion dollars. Could they let it run off? Uh, currently, they reinvest the proceeds when bonds come due. Uh, the pace of that will be calendar-based, will it be database? We're going to have to see. Explain what unwind means. What well, would that involve? Well, you got $4.5 trillion. So how, how are you going to get rid of that balance sheet? Bonds that they own eventually mature. Right. Now, in the past, they've been actually you know, reinvesting that money, buying more bonds. If they stop that, slowly the balance sheet will shrink. I think it's estimated that right now, if I, after about five years of that, it would get down to about $2 trillion, still a pretty big number. So if the Fed is busy unwinding that $4.5 trillion dollars. Uh, what does it mean for raising rates? Surely it can't do both at the same time, or maybe it can, but wouldn't this indicate a, a rate hike pause? I think originally that was the intention to do both at the same time, but there are many in the Fed thinking that maybe they're going to have to pause raising rates uh, if they start to do that, because as it, is, it is another form of uh, tightening. I think they're going to be data dependent on that, how fast they do that and when and if they do raise rates in the future. Well, some of that data, the jobs report, and it's, uh, it, it's looking pretty good, what we can expect from tomorrow according to the ADP report. Yeah, the ADP report was, was pretty good. Uh, 263,000 is above expectations. A pretty good setup for Friday's number at this point. Some, some of the, there were some issues regarding uh, small businesses, uh, but for the most part, it was a really good report. Are we just getting complacent? We're just expecting good jobs reports? I mean, unemployment... Maybe so, but the market didn't seem so complacent today. It was a pretty big turnaround. You were talking about it, about it earlier. I, I was on my way back to the office and everything was rocking. And then I called into my trade desk and, and they told me we had just gone to into the red for the day. So I was pretty disappointed. Why did we have that dramatic reversal? I think, you know, perception is meeting reality here. And everybody's starting to really understand that tax reform, it's not happening this year. We've talked about this in the past. You know, we have a, a 77,000 uh, page tax code. Uh, if you think back to the Reagan administration, the last time we did this, it took four years to negotiate. Right. It's ludicrous to think we're going to do it by August. Even Ryan has talked about it. It's 2018 business. And certainly uh, there's a very little cooperation between Democrats and Republicans, and this is something that, that yeah. would require that. Yeah, and even Jamie Dimon talked about this, and, and I, I thought his letter to, to investors was pretty interesting. Well, I, I, let's talk about what Jamie Dimon sure. said, um, because he said clearly something is wrong with the United States. And this is the same man uh, that, that earlier this year, he credited Trump with boosting confidence and boosting the economy and the markets, uh, saying he has reawakened, and I quote, the animal spirit. So why the change of mind from Diamond? I don't know if it's a change of mind. I think he's pointing out there's a huge polarization uh, in this country. And that didn't happen in the last four months when, since, since uh, Trump has been elected. It's been building for a decade. And it even translates even to social media, Twitter. Even on my Facebook page, I see friends and family. They're literally throwing political hand grenades across mm. the aisle. Uh, so you're getting that kind of divide and conquest. You have a divided conquest. There's a right, a left, and no center. It's very difficult to get anything done. So you have a dysfunctional Washington. Eventually, that leads to a dysfunctional country. I think that's what he's talking about. Well, he was also talking about another country, China. Of course, uh, yeah. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. And Dimon, as Dimon says that, that Trump was right about China and that the Chinese know it. What do you think he meant by that? I think he, I think he understands the truth. And, and China's going to be very resistant here. And I, it's going to be interesting to see if they can build a rapport to get anything done. Very difficult for U.S. businesses to make headway in China because eventually you have to partner with somebody in China. They suck out the intellectual property and then eventually say to you, you know what, we don't need you anymore. That's not a business relationship. And I think President Trump is going to be speaking to that and he needs President Xi to deal with North Korea. That's the real issue. David, at the end of the day, the U.S. economy, largest in the world, China's economy, second largest in the world, don't they have no choice but to cooperate? Isn't their growth so interdependent? You'd think that. You'd think that. And I hope that that's the case. I think there's going to have to be give and take here. I think they're going to have to negotiate North Korea. I think China could do something very obvious here. They could say, we're going to protect you if you 
get rid of your nuclear weapons. If there's a, an incursion from the South, if there's an incursion from the United States, we'll protect you. Get rid of the nuclear weapons. I think President Trump is going to focus on that. That would be a very interesting strategy for Xi Jinping to follow. Maybe we should consult with him. I think he should. All right. Thank you so much, thank David you. Nelson, Chief Strategist at Bell Point.